Last week, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, announced the extension of the furlough scheme until the end of March. However, this still leaves almost three million people excluded from government support. Well, freelancers and newly self-employed contractors who are on PAYE and company directors are among those who've not been able to access help since the pandemic began, despite the fact that many have seen their incomes completely dry up. We're joined now by Nadine Khalifi, who sells homemade bath products on market stalls, who has been given just £19 support because she is in her first year of business, has no fixed premises. And we're also joined by chef Tim Smith, who was excluded from furlough because he's only recently started his job. And also this morning to explain this situation, which affects so many people so badly, executive editor of Times Money Mentor, Gemma Godfrey. Um, Gemma, this is a group of people who feel that they haven't just slipped through the cracks. In some cases, they feel like they are, have been deliberately left out of government support. Um, how did we get to a situation where almost three million people are not entitled to what the Chancellor has just extended for the others? The big problem we have here is that this is a scheme that is one size and not for all. And the reason is, and the reason it's making the situation worse is that it's based on the eligibility the first time round. They didn't fix the problem. So millions of hardworking people have had the rug pulled from under them rather than a helping hand because they were overlooked the first time but now they're actively being ignored because of the different criteria, and in some cases, quite arbitrary criteria to be able to qualify for this support. You know, you, we talk about people, you know, that are recently self-employed, but this was seven months ago that the first round of support came out. So this is the reason why um, people are struggling. You can't be recently self-employed. You have to have earned, you know, a certain, below a certain threshold. Um, you can't be set up as a limited liability company. And some people did for, for things like childcare vouchers or because their clients needed them to. And and if you're earning, you need to earn the majority of your income through self-employment. And as we mentioned, you know, some people are earning through PAYE, some of them have taken that brave step to try and take on a certain amount of their income themselves and create companies for the future. And the big issue that I have with this is these are people that are looking after themselves, their families, and potentially creating new jobs for other people. Why hasn't, should be... why hasn't the government done more to protect these people? Given this, it's no fault of their own. The pandemic affects all of us. Why have they not looked after these people in this, in this bracket? I think the real issue has been um, how broad the scheme is. In the first instance, OK, it was understandable. They needed to get a scheme out very quickly. And therefore, they went out with something that was so broad with such, you know, um, as we said, arbitrary deadlines um, that, so they could enact it very quickly. However, as we said, they've had seven months yeah. to be able to fine tune this. They've seen how many millions of people, millions of hard workers got missed out the first and second time. So this is a real issue and it's something that they should have been able to fix. You can check things like, for example, people's you know, tax returns, you can use HMRC. They're mechanisms that you can use because the problem we've, we're seeing now is it's getting worse because people that haven't been as badly affected or potentially haven't been affected at all, we've seen some of those people being able to claim, whereas people that have been the worst affected... Right. you know, people Which is ridiculous. Today, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, Just... let's, let's talk to those people, as you say, um, Gemma, the hard workers who are completely excluded. Tim Smith, you started your new job as a chef on the 8th of March, but because you got paid after the 19th of March, you missed one of the deadlines. What sort of support have you got, Tim, in this crisis? Um, not a great deal, um, because I missed the, the 19th of March. As you said, the only option for me was universal credit. So I signed up to that, like the Chancellor said so. And then in April, I received nothing from it. And the reason I received nothing from it was because my new employer had paid me for their 12 days I'd worked up until lockdown. So you've literally had 12 <laughs> days pay and that's all you've received. And then lockdown, the crisis, you see all the money being given as a support net to others. You apply for universal credit and get the sum total of zero. Yeah, in April I got zero from Universal Credit. I had to wait as far till May until I got a payment from Universal Credit, which even then for myself was only £417. So I was still losing between like twelve to £1,300 every month throughout lockdown. Um, April, that had a real bad effect on me because I 
that I couldn't even afford to 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 eat. Uh, I was literally rationing my meals, so I was eating every other day throughout April as a result. Um, but obviously that that had a, a huge effect on me. And then you 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 returned to work in June for two months when hospitality opened up again, as your employer retained you. You worked through the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. Then you were let go again in September. You returned to Wales, only for Wales to go into the circuit breaker lockdown. You got a job in Chester, but that got cancelled because England mm. is now in lockdown. It's like a, a constant roller coaster playing on, I would imagine, not least your emotions with all this, of you know, constantly getting a bit of hope and then it gets crushed again. <sighs> It's the hope that kills, isn't it? Um, it, it has been constant. Uh, literally, the, the, this whole year, the, the, the same things that occurred. It's like every time you you got an opportunity to progress again, it's something's come in to to, to hold you back. Um, so the, the debt that I did pay off as a result, you know, it's quickly come back because I'm back in the same boat as I was in uh, in March. And, and so many uh, in your position, Tim Nadine uh, Khalifa, uh, Khalifi, you were a, a, well, you are you're a market trader, show exhibitor, selling handmade bath right. and home products. So tell us your story. You, you've had nineteen pounds help. I have. Yes. Uh, well, I started my business in two thousand and eighteen. Um, that meant I could file my 1819 tax return um, for the Self-Employed Income Support Scheme grant. But as Tim Farron said in the House of Commons, that businesses do not make a profit in their first year. They rarely make a profit in their second. It's normally year three where businesses start to see a profit. And because of that, and the average that was taken to calculate the income support scheme, I was entitled to £19. And how was your business doing before the pandemic? Uh, the first year was difficult, as any new business is. Um, last year, 19 to 20, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, was, you know, was absolutely fantastic. I had savings in the bank. I was looking to get a mortgage next year. Um, all my savings are now gone. Um, I've had to literally start again from scratch. I had to throw away a hell of a lot of stock over the last few months because um, obviously stuff like that doesn't keep forever. Um, I'm now at the point where, even though I was allowed to go back to work a few months ago, I've obviously, like I said, I've had to buy more stock because all the main events where you make the decent money, all the agricultural shows, all the, you know, the big family events where you're getting 200,000 people visiting over a weekend, they're all cancelled. Yeah. So you're doing the street markets, the street markets where people aren't yet confident to come out as often as people were before. What so what feel, are you making away? Nadine, what do you feel about the fact that for a lot of people on furlough, it's been a very good, successful, quite long-running scheme. I know people who've had, you know, let's be honest, quite a good time on furlough, especially if they don't like the job very much. They've been sitting at home, having a good time, 80% of their money for a lot of the time. I mean, you know, it's been very good for a lot of people, the furlough scheme, hasn't it? But for people like you and Tim, you've not had any benefit from this. No, none whatsoever. And, you know, it's good that they did support people in, in that way. But what they didn't do and what they should have done is target the people that actually really did need the help. And they haven't done that. And they've had all this time to fix it. And yet still, they seem unwilling to actually help people. Tim, I wonder if We've I can just ask you, um, you say that you did eventually get money through Universal Credit, but how does it compare to what you would have got if you had been able to be put on furlough at 80%? Can you hear us, Tim? Thank you, Mike. Sorry, yeah. Um, if, if, if I was on furlough, I wouldn't be nearly £5,000 in debt like I am now because, as I said, each month that passed by, uh, I was only entitled to £417 with the universal credit and that didn't even touch my bills. Uh, that, that's the reason I'm in debt as a result of it. Um, so, as you said, when I returned to work and started paying off as much as that as I can... Um, it's just all been undone again as a result of where I'm at now. So, you know, the debt's still there. The, the, I'm still not <laughs> furloughed. Um, and I'm literally just your, your bog-standard worker. I, you know, well, you know, what, but you know what, Tim? You're not a bog-standard worker. You're someone that's really tried hard to get employment. You've tried it all year. You've had blow after blow. We're getting absolutely lit yeah. up here with similar stories from people. What you and Nadine do, you represent millions of people. You're just two people we chose to talk to, but we could have chosen several million 
because so many people are caught up in this and we've got to try and put pressure on the government to help those who, through no fault of their own, find themselves in this, you know, destitute yeah. position. And, and you've it's, still it's got debts and, and those increase and you've still got bills to pay. They don't go away, mm. do they, in the most part? And you just don't have the financial support. Three million of you um, excluded. Well, this campaign, Excluded UK, is doing a good job, I think. It's shining a light on this, on the people that fell through the cracks, as we put it. Um, you know, it's a trite phrase for people who are literally mm. living without any income because of a pandemic which has rendered their business unviable, but actually without the pandemic would be viable. And I think that's the point, is that if the government's going to shut down the ability of people to make any money, they've yeah. got to help them. Gemma, uh, listen... I just wonder, before we let you go, um, the government insists there is support out there. What and, and yet everybody involved says there isn't, it's not enough, it's not sufficient. What is the justification? Is it that the government has to have records of your proof of your income, your earnings, your employment? Otherwise, it, it, there is, you know, it, it doesn't th it thinks perhaps that, you know, people might make up the fact that they were self-employed. I mean, I just can't see a reason why so many millions of people would be excluded for, for support. What is the official reason, do you think? I mean, the sad fact is, is that as we keep hearing that some of these some of these criteria can be the deadlines are quite arbitrary. You know, we are talking about, again, seven, you know, this is seven months later. So there is actually time to be able to check things. Originally, the first time around, it was to make sure that people genuinely were getting the majority of their income from self-employment. They were trying to put some checks and balances in place. Yeah. But we've now come so far that that argument really doesn't hold much weight anymore. Yeah. And you're seeing so many people miss out and the situation gets so much worse that I don't, you know, that word justification, and I don't think it, it, you know, it, it has much weight anymore. You've got people that keep coming up and they keep getting kicked down. And these are people that need it most. And the ironic situation about this is the criteria that you need to make sure that people haven't just recently started businesses. Well, you know, as Nadine was pointing out quite rightly, when people recently have started a business, that's when they've taken on the most amount of risk. Yeah. That's when they've taken the most brave step. And that's when they, they need the most support. And this is affecting people's mental health. And it's, you know, they need to be provided support when they need it most. 